Libertarianism is the purest form of liberalism. We get the word liberty from liberal, and we get the word libertarian from liberty. To explain libertarianism, let's start with the premise. The libertarian position on every issue you can think of is rooted in this one premise, and the premise goes like this. Every individual naturally has the right, the freedom, to do whatever he or she wishes, so long as that freedom is not used to take away the freedom of another. Therefore, you can do whatever you want in your backyard, just don't do it in someone else's backyard unless they want you to. You get the idea. So what does this mean for government? Well, there are some libertarians that actually are against all government. They believe in a type of anarchy. They're sometimes known as anarcho-capitalists. Most libertarians, however, are a little more pragmatic than that. Most libertarians do believe in a very limited role for government. They do believe that there are certain legitimate functions of government. For the libertarian, the government should uh, stop us from killing each other, for one thing. Everyone has the right to live. The government should also protect our property. Everyone has a right to their property, and the government should stop us from stealing from each other. The government should also protect us from any harm caused by another. And lastly, the government should protect our right to enter a contract and therefore rule accordingly, thereby enforcing contracts. So the one thing that is binding, I guess, in a libertarian system would be a contract between two or more people. So how does this affect the issues? Well, let's start with the dicey issue of same-sex marriage. The libertarian position is not as obvious as you might think. Some might think, well, libertarians would be for gay marriage, right? Uh, yes and no. Libertarians certainly support the right of anybody to marry whoever they want. However, libertarians don't believe that the government should be involved in that process. Most same-sex marriage advocates want the government to license gay marriage. Libertarians do not, but it's not because they're treating gays unequally. It's because libertarians don't believe government should be licensing any marriage at all. So the libertarian, marriage is a choice. A choice between two people, maybe more people. But it's a choice that the government just shouldn't be involved with. So the libertarian answer to this is get the government out of marriage. Libertarians believe in a pure free market economy. The kind of economy conceptualized by Adam Smith, but the libertarian doesn't make the exceptions to the free market that Adam Smith makes. You'll note that Adam Smith is okay with progressive income taxes, and he does support a government role in breaking up monopolies. Adam Smith also supports government funding of education. On those three points, the libertarians would disagree with Adam Smith. The libertarians say that a pure free market can solve all of these issues. When it comes to taxes of any kind, the libertarian sees government taxes as the equivalent of the government taking a gun to your head and forcing you to give them your money. So libertarians believe that the government should only be funded by people donating money or by user fees. So many, of course, will say, and I'm included in this, by the way, that in such a system, corporate monopolies will emerge. Certain people will accumulate massive amounts of wealth, and they will use that wealth to control people. If they have a corner on a product or service that we absolutely need, like let's say that there's one clothing manufacturer in the entire country, maybe even the entire world, we can either be naked or do whatever they want so that we can get clothing from them. Well, the libertarian will say that the only reason such a monopoly could ever exist is because the government stepped in in the first place. Any corporate monopoly you can think of in human history, the libertarian can look at it very closely and find that in some way, shape, or form, the government was involved. The government was tangled up with it somehow. Now, the problem with this is it's almost unfalsifiable. 
It's just the nature of government to get tangled up with things. And of course you're not going to find an example in human history of the government not being involved because the government's always involved. However, the libertarian will say, therefore, in the abstract theoretical sense, you could have a system where the government's not involved and in such a system there would be no monopolies. I can't prove a libertarian wrong because such a situation has never existed in human history. So libertarianism is an interesting abstract theory but it's really never been put into practice before. Libertarians would have no problem with people choosing to join a labor union. And if the workers of that union are angry with management and choose to go on strike, that's just the free market at work. That's the worker saying, we control supply of labor, and we're going to use that supply of labor to get what we want. If management doesn't like it, they can always hire new workers, but the libertarian would say the best thing for the government to do is not get involved. It's not the government's business. This is a dispute between management and labor. Any issue you can think of, you can go back to that libertarian premise and have an obvious answer, but not with abortion. What's different about abortion? Well, I would hope that it would be obvious. Whenever we're talking about abortion, we always end up debating where does life begin. If life does begin at conception, then the libertarian answer to that is obvious. The government should step in to protect the fetus. However, what if life doesn't begin at conception? What if life doesn't begin until the day we're born, the day we take our first breath? If that's the case, then the libertarian is pro-choice. The libertarian would say, it's entirely up to the woman because there's no life, therefore no one else's rights are being affected. Therefore, the woman is free to do whatever she wants. So, on this particular issue, libertarians can be just as divided as everyone else. But on any other issue, libertarians are going to be pretty well in sync with each other. Lastly, let me discuss foreign policy. And it's a good segue into my discussion of the future of libertarianism because this is very important to their immediate future. The libertarian position on foreign policy is pretty much this. We certainly have a right to defend ourselves. If someone attacks us, we can defend ourselves, we can fight back. If they invade us, we can invade them in order to quell the threat, etc. However, libertarians are non-interventionists. They don't believe that we should use the military to stick our nose where it doesn't belong. And where it doesn't belong, by the way, is pretty much everywhere, as far as a libertarian's concerned. You see, in order to support the kind of massive military required for us to police the world, we need a lot of revenue. And to get a lot of revenue, we need a lot of taxes. And I already told you what the libertarian position is on taxes. So it's quite clearly incompatible with libertarianism to advocate a very interventionist foreign policy.